Hi everyone, this is a follow-up to a video I did a while back about how to get RGB output from a Raspberry Pi. And ever since I did that original video, there's been so many new developments, new products that have been released, and new ways to just go about doing the whole experience. So I wanted to do a few follow-up videos, and this one's going to center on the different hardware options that people have, at least as of November 2017. The Raspberry Pi gaming scene is growing pretty quickly, so I'm sure there's going to be new options every month. But I just wanted to focus on some of the, my favorites that are out now. And if you haven't seen the original video, I would watch at least a few minutes of it because the basics of imaging uh, going into the config text file are pretty much the same. The only major difference is almost every solution that we use now, you don't need to worry about anything Linux based. You could just take that SD card, stick it in any PC and get to the config text file. But other than that, um, let me just move forward and show you guys the different hardware solutions. I'd like to just quickly start off with the VGA based solution, which is the same one that I spoke about in the other video. And if you're looking for an RGB HV based or even a VGA solution, this one's perfect. Uh, you can get the smaller boards where with just a tiny bit of cutting fit directly in, or you can get the full hats that go all the way across. Um, but you would need a case that, uh, that has more low profile or no case at all in order for it to fit. But they're still great solutions, they're extremely cheap, and if you already own a sync combiner, maybe just get one of these to save cost. Next we have the Pi to Scart from Arcade Forge. Um, this is just pretty much the same thing as the VGA adapter, but with the sync combiner built in, and it outputs SCART. Um, as you can see, it uses a little pigtail to go from the audio output to get routed through the SCART cable. And to be honest, uh, it's basic, simple, and exactly what most people need. So this is essentially the same exact thing as the VGA adapter, but it outputs RGBS SCART. Um, and there's really not much else to say about it, which is a good thing. Um, you know, you use the same config.txt file, uh, you could use their image or any other one you want, and it just works. So this is a great option for people that just need basic RGB output with a SCAR cable. Next, we have the products from RetroTank that come in a few different formats and get video a slightly different way than the other solutions. This uses a different type of video, which uh, requires a slight change to the config.txt file, but it's still compatible with pretty much every image out there, including their own. Um, and there is a small possibility that you can get slightly better video quality with the, all of the RetroTank products, but that really is going to depend on your full setup, and it might not be a noticeable solution. It's just that they use the full RGB color space to get their video um, 888, whereas the VGA-based pro products, hence the VGA666, use the different RGB color spaces. Now that's kind of getting a little bit complicated, and the way it's actually done was discussed with an interview I did with the creator, Mike Chi, and if anybody's interested, I'll put a link in the description for that. But basically, the RetroTink products are compatible with all of the other images. You just need to make a small change to the config text file, and you may or may not get a very, very small video quality increase. But what you do get is much different output options. So first is the component video version, which I absolutely love this one because this is everything you need to just grab an old cheap CRT with component inputs and start gaming. Um, most arcade monitors were essentially just nicer versions of consumer grade TVs, so if you could find a high quality consumer grade set with component inputs and use one of these, then you're going to get a pretty accurate arcade experience as far as the look and feel goes. Um, they also have S-Video outputs as well as Composite, but if you were looking for just Composite, you could just actually use the AV output of the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, the Composite video is here just because they had the ability to for just the cost of whatever this little RCA port is, so why not? Also, all of the ports can be available at the same time, so if you wanted to do maybe S-Video out to a TV and then component to a capture card, you could do that as well. The other solutions are a BNC adapter, which this thing is just badass. Uh, this is a prototype. Um, it can output direct BNC, or if you'd like, you could just use a SCART to BNC cable, or technically BNC to SCART because they're directional. And uh, instead of using the resistor ladder, it actually does everything right on one chip, which is kind of neat. And then, of course, they have their ultimate edition, which has all of their outputs available on one board. 
and they all output simultaneously, and that VGA output could be RGB HV or RGB S, which means if you wanted to plug that directly into a monitor, all you would need is a VGA to 4 BNC cable. So they're all great solutions, and they're very versatile, and uh, links to all of them are available down below. Before I go into the next solutions, I need to mention the software that's used. Now, I know that this is supposed to be a hardware-based video, but this is an important point that anybody buying any of these solutions would need to know. All of the previous solutions that I mentioned can use absolutely any software out there as well as the custom images that those people supply for everybody. But these next, I actually recommend that you use their image which does have some limitations. So I'll talk individually about each, but the main thing is that the software they're using doesn't auto expand the memory card. So what that means is if you have, let's say a 128 gigabyte memory card and you load on their eight gigabyte image, you're not going to have any more free space than you would have if you loaded up an eight gigabyte memory card. Whereas all of the previous solutions used uh, basic, uh, basic software that does auto expand. Now, if you're a Linux guy, you could do something like use Gparted, or if you have a PC, you could boot to a Gparted disk. But it all adds a layer of complexity to it that you don't get with the other solutions. Now, the next two do offer a USB stick, so that you or USB stick support, so that all you have to do is load your ROMs on a USB stick, plug it into the USB port, and reboot. Um, but as far as I know, you actually have to do that every time that you boot these images. So what that means is you would boot to the, uh, whatever software that they bundle with it, um, and then that's probably going to show a menu with a few different options and some test ROMs loaded on. Then you insert your USB key, go into the menu, and mount the USB drive. It'll reboot, and then when it comes back, only what's available on this USB stick will be available on the system. which. In many cases, that might actually be a very good thing, and I think you might be able to do that in some of the generic solutions as well, um, because for some people, you don't have your network cable connected. You really just need the USB stick. Um, but the only downside is every time you boot, you need to do that. It doesn't just boot right into that mode. Now, things are changing. Uh, I'm sure a few months from now, both of those images are going to be updated, so maybe you could have the access of both, and you don't need to reboot. But I just wanted to make that point now before I went on any further, because those other two solutions coming up are a little bit more complicated, as well as the software stuff that I just said. Next up is the RGB Pi. This thing is one very cool little solution that has all of the hardware necessary to do the conversion right in the SCART head itself. So this is overall a very small footprint solution, and it just, uh, it, you know, it's kind of neat for people that just want something small and don't want to have multiple cables set up. And the fact that this is the exact length means there's very little chance of any kind of interference from the unshielded cable. Now, the only downside I have with the RGB Pi is that on the one that I have, it seems to be a little bit incompatible with other software images. Now, this is a prototype. The main one comes in a black cable, which is how you know it's the production version. Uh, and I was told by the developer that if you have the right settings in the config text file, you could use this with pretty much anything. But overall, with this solution, it's recommended that you use their software, both for compatibility and because their software is designed to mimic the exact refresh rate and resolutions of all arcade board, of the original arcade boards. Um, the downside of that is I've had a lot of compatibility issues with this. Um, it won't work with some BVMs. Um, it worked with all PVMs that I plugged directly into, but it also wouldn't work with RGB modded TVs or through many of the powered switches. I believe SuperG updated the firmware in his GSCART switch Lite to be compatible with this. However, I have one of the originals that doesn't have the firmware. So overall, I would just plan ahead on making sure that this is compatible with your setup. But if you just want one solution direct into an RGB monitor with as close to the original resolutions and timings as possible, this one's probably a great choice for you. And lastly, we have the RPI to SCART. Uh, this is by far the most unique out of all of the different solutions I'm showing, and it's huge and filled with options. So rather than this being a hat that goes on top of the Raspberry Pi, in this one, the Raspberry Pi actually sits on top of this device. 
Um, and it's actually got an on-off switch, which is the only one on all of these. Uh, definitely note that you're not supposed to use the power on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in fact, I think they put that capacitor there specifically to block it. You actually use the power back here, which is the same port, so it makes it very easy no matter what power solution you're using. But it does have the on-off switch, which comes in handy. And it also has a dip switch that allows you to choose which one of the front input ports you're using. So this is compatible with Sega Genesis controllers, uh, and I believe this port also means Atari and a few of the others that have the same shape, as well as Neo Geo controllers. And you could even have an adapter to use uh, TurboGrafx-16 PC Engine controllers on there as well. So this thing is filled with features, and uh, you know I, I like how it's set up like a mini console. So you have the ports in front, and then you have everything in back that you would need. Um, and it does have just your basic SCART output, which is good. The only thing to note about this one is I also wasn't able to get this working with generic software. I've only was able to get it to work with their software, which has the same requirement of needing a USB stick in order to boot and have all of your games in. So overall, I really like this one a lot, and I think it has a bunch of very awesome features. But one thing to note is at the moment, all of the support and the forums are strictly in French. And uh, while I'm always talking about how I love uh, making the community smaller and having people with more languages come in, I am just an English speaker, so I had a hard time finding even basic support on this one. Um, but luckily, I was able to email back and forth with uh, the creator and get this thing up and running for myself. And it might be the perfect option for somebody looking for controller ports built right in. So as you guys can see, there's a solution out there for everybody. Unfortunately, there isn't one clear winner because everybody's situation is going to be completely different. I mean, I know a lot of people that really wanted to use their original controllers and they're going to use this for a lot more than just arcade emulation. They want it for actual consoles. And maybe the RPI Discart would actually be the, the perfect solution. Or maybe if somebody strictly just wants a Neo Geo box or something like that, it would make total sense. Um, obviously, anybody hooking up to a consumer-grade TV, the RetroTink component video is going to be the perfect solution. Um, anybody that has a SCART set up and they just want to SCART cable in without worrying about sync combiners. Uh, and then, of course, just the basic VGA adapters for people that need those. But overall, the options are absolutely uh, awesome and really should cover everybody's use case. Me, personally, I believe for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be using the Retro Tank Ultimate because it has all of the outputs that I could ever imagine. So that means one solution to cover every kind of output. And that's exactly what I would need because I really do tons of testing and messing around with and less actual gaming. So um, really just base your solution on whatever is good for you and really whatever your specific scenario requires. Well, that about does it for the hardware side of things. And in my next video, I'd really like to dig into the software side of things. Is there a front end that's overall better than others? Can you get thumbnails or even better, can you get preview videos on a, a 240p solution with RGB out? I was able to do it on my Windows-based main machine a few years ago and I thought it was absolutely amazing, but I'm not even sure if that could be done on a Raspberry Pi yet. And of course, I'd like to dig into lag testing, which is obviously a, always a big issue because certain emulators are going to have more lag than others. Um, is MAME, FBA, is there a front end that affects it? All of those questions are pretty much what I'd really like to dig into next time. Uh, and if anybody has any thoughts on that, please post down below. As always, I have to thank my Patreons, because without you guys, there's no way I could make these videos. So thank you guys so much. And any comments or criticism, please leave down below. I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say, and I do read all the comments. And I'll see you guys next time.